Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to my shop. Today I'm going to continue the series on the sliding table saw purchase considerations and today we're going to cover rip fences and cross cut fences, the various options that you may have available to you depending upon what saw you're looking at and um, let's get to it. Okay, I've uh, lowered the blade below the table and swung the upper guard out of the way. And the first, uh, first thing we're going to discuss is the rip fence. And the rip fence on every slider that I've seen has basically been uh, very, quite, very similar to the Delta Unifence, if you're familiar with that. It's got an aluminum fence. It's you can position it back to clear the blade. You could use this as a standard rip fence, like you would any Beesmeyer type type saw. They'll also have a what so I'm gonna get the noise out of the way here. Um, fences of this type also have a low position. Uh, this will enable you to tilt the blade and not cut into your fence and, and still get a through cut off. Uh, sometimes it's just more convenient to have it this way. It depends on, on what function you're using on a saw. As far as scales go, uh, pretty much every saw that I've seen has an analog scale, which is in essence a tape type measure uh, attached to the, the fence assembly. And you can position the fence usually by a knob or whatever. You can, this particular one, you can position here lock it in place and you're, wherever your fence aligned is, is your setting. Some fences have a micro adjust or fine adjust to get it close and then you tweak on that. This particular saw doesn't have that. It's got, um, I guess it's micro adjust is really the handle on the other end and I'll talk about that a bit separately. Uh, this particular saw has a digital indicator for fence position as well. It displays on the computer touch screen. I found it to be very accurate and very convenient. Uh, some saws will have a digital indicator here if you order that option uh, such that you can uh, read the position. One thing that might be useful is a swiveling type, type device to where you can see it as an operator. Um, if you if you don't have the means to operate the fence from the operator side of the machine, which is over on this side, then it may be, it, the whole point may be moot. Some saws, you're only going to be able to position and operate the fence from, from this in front of the saw, like I'm standing now. Now on this saw, I can loosen the knob, position the fence. This moves very smoothly. Uh, some saws, there's a, a rail that it attaches to with a knob that you tighten in position. Uh, other saws have a, uh, a round bar and um, basically you just clamp to the round bar. As far as uh, operation, this, this has another, this has, to me, the Martin is unique in this. I'm not aware of any other saw that has this feature but it's got the ability to position the rip fence very rapidly. I think there's about 50 millimeters or roughly two inches per every revolution of the hand wheel. And with the uh, digital indicator on, this, on the screen, I can get accuracy to the nearest tenth of a millimeter, which is roughly four thousandths of an inch. And you can lock it in position. Uh, as far as digital indicators, that the, this this was the primary thing that sold me on this particular uh, Martin saw. Hey, one thing you should expect to see on any saw, and they, it, it varies depending upon the make and manufacturer, uh, is the ability to get this fence system out of the way for when you're using the crosscut uh, sliding table to cut off long pieces. And in this, some of them, you remove the fence, if, fits into a channel, you just remove the fence completely. Some of them, they, uh, they kind of swing out of the way and you'll know, typically see that on the, on the machines where the fence is mounted to a round bar. Uh, some of the more sophisticated systems have a system where it goes all the way to the, 
to the far end and then drops below the table. <clears throat> and in this particular case, this has a kind of a hand wheel here and you just pull the fence system off and it's got a storage bracket out there uh, on the front of the machine. So that's pretty much the uh, operation and various options on the rip fence system. It's not, it's not overly complex. So, uh, just choose what uh, best fits your needs for the convenience items that you want. So now let's move on to the crosscut fence. So before I move over to the sliding table saw, I've gone to the shaper just because it's, it has one of the most basic of, of uh, sliding table crosscut fence designs. And um, this, is a, this is a Felder X-Roll system. And it's got an attachment here where you can screw the fence down. It's got a scale which goes from plus 45 to minus 45 degrees. And it's got a little stop here that adjusts, that's used as a stop for the uh, 90 degree uh, fence setting. This is the fence itself. Let's see if I can get close up here and show the, this thing's kind of heavy, but in here there's a, a, a flat head screw that's used to adjust the 90 degree setting. And I think what I'll do is just <coughs> show you how this attaches. And various, various makes are going to have different mechanisms of attachment. So, and typically what you'll see is some type of device that you use to zero the fence. You know, this would be in a shaper because shaper diameter is different. It's, it's, a, it's a vertical spindle as opposed to a horizontal one. It's going to vary considerably in relationship to whatever cutter I've got installed. So the way I adjust this is I put this flip down and I know you can't see it but I've got the little black flip stop up. It's engaged with the uh, with the stop on the back of the fence and I just have two kip levers that attach to the sliding table. In order to adjust the angle I just move the fence to the proper scale setting, that would be plus 45 or minus 45, depending on your perspective. And this would be the minus 45 uh, setting. So you're just aligning the fence up to the scale. Okay, so this is the uh, outrigger table on, on the sliding table saw. And things you can expect to see uh, for any saw with, with a longer table, I would expect to see an outrigger on it. Some saws you can actually add another fence system similar to what you just saw I had on my shaper. But an outrigger table, it, it comes in, in a variety of sizes and features and it, it really just depends on how much money you want to spend uh, to get what you need or want. Uh, this particular table is what the Martin calls their miter table. I found it to be extremely accurate, dead on. I haven't adjusted square on this thing in, you know, ever. For an outrigger table, you can expect to see some type of support arm under here, and this pretty much going to be the same depending upon what manufacturer. It, it will position itself and extend, has an extension arm, depending upon where it is along the travel, or where it is along the table. You can expect to see a mechanism to where you can move this outrigger pretty much anywhere along this sliding table. One thing that you would expect to see on an outrigger is that obviously the length of the fence is a consideration and, I, and I'll just, just as a word of advice to you, this is a very heavy outrigger. Some, out, some sliding table saws, they're, they're really 
their design is more suited to removing and reinstalling the outrigger. I know the Felder, the Felder's got a couple of carts there, and it actually is quite effective at at getting on and off the table. It just takes a few minutes to do, and it stores easily out of the way. An outrigger on a sliding table saw does consume shop floor space, so just be aware of that. If you if you need to to install or remove your outrigger a lot. I wouldn't recommend this saw. This is, this is a very heavy table. The, uh, for, for outrigger fences, you would expect to see an extension here. I think this one, this one goes out a, a 136 inches or so. It's, it's very long and, and very rarely do I need to, to, to actually use that feature. So that's not as important you to You can reposition this to The uh, front, the front side of your outrigger, as opposed to the back, you should expect to see some mechanism for keeping this and adjusting the square of this fence to your to your outrigger table. Different makes have different methods, but you can see that I can move the fence in and out. Well, that means my calibration for both whether my analog scale or my digital scale is off. So in this case, the Martin is provided with a little indexing stop underneath that I can hold in position. It's a calibrated pin. And now my, I've just calibrated my fence position to where my display is. Okay, so now that I've got this to the forward position where you can get a better view, and you may have seen this in some of my other videos, uh, this particular fence system has what's called a two point of contact stop. And by that, basically when, my, when I put my workpiece here, I've got a spacer block here and the stop is held away from the main body of the fence. The only advantage I see to that is the, um, is for rough timber that may be bowed or twisted and it just, it tends to, enable you to, for rough sawn stock, uh, position your workpiece such that you don't, you, don't have a, you, you don't have rocking occurring in the middle of a cut. That's the biggest advantage to this I see. Uh, the disadvantage to this system is once you get all the way over here, and let me see if I'm still on camera. Yes, I am barely, but I'm limited you know, I can't position my fence stop way over here. It's, it's here. So that's, that's kind of a, a nuisance type thing. But since I built the Fritz and Franz jig, it's not that much of a nuisance anymore because when I'm doing small stock, I'm never using this stop system. I'm using the Fritz and Franz jig. One thing to look for, uh, and this is an operator convenience thing, regardless of what saw you use. Some, some makes, they put the, the scale, this analog scale on the top. Well, that's fine when this fence is in the rear position, but when you put it in the forward position, you, you, unless you have a very long neck like a crane uh, where you can go over and see, see your settings, uh, that, that becomes a convenience thing for me. Uh, I like to see the angled um, analog scales. It just seems to make a lot more sense to me. As far as digital indications, that. This is, I find digital most useful for being able to repeat cuts. After you've made a cut, you know what it is, and if say you screw up a piece, which happens to me uh, more often than I would care to admit, but it does happen, and I need to make another cut, and I need it to be exactly what it was before to maintain square or whatever, as opposed to being off by a 64th or a 32nd of an inch or whatever it is, I can, uh, use this system if, and go exactly back to to the previous setting I had based on my cut list and use my fine adjustments. So if I'm using 640 millimeters, I can use my fine adjust. If I need it to 640.5, I can adjust it very easily. And I found this to be quite accurate. Another advantage to the digital display is the ability to go uh, but switch between absolute and incremental and you may have seen that on one of my other videos 
in this case, I'm, I'm just going to set this up to, I'll call it 625 millimeters. And let's say I want something 1.3 millimeters greater. Well, I could add 1.3 to that and get, oh, 626.3 millimeters. But if I go to incremental mode, I can go and I've just gone another 1.3 millimeters. So when I go back out into absolute mode, it, it's, uh, it's done the math for me. It's a convenience thing. Is it necessary? No. Is it, uh, it's something that I really don't use a whole lot. I do use it occasionally, but rarely. Okay, the other thing, uh, other than square cuts, which are the vast majority of what I use the outrigger for, is the ability to do miter cuts. And there are various options here. This is obviously the miter table, and you may have seen this in some of my other videos. This has a digital indicator, and I can get to the nearest one hundredth of a degree. I can't measure it that accurately, but hey, it's, I know it's right on at, at 90, so I'm just, and it's never seemed to have failed me when I've gone to other angles. I've gotten what I've expected. A lot of saws are going to have a, two scales. They'll have a plus 40, zero to plus 45 and a zero to minus 45, and you position your fence at, at the uh, angle necessary to make the, uh, make the appropriate cut. Some saws have a length compensation system available as an option on your outrigger, and pretty much that's an indexing system such that it automatically compensates for the angle for your, for your fence angle. Uh, in, the, um, in the Martin, or, and I, I know there's other manufacturers that have this uh, available as well. There's a, uh, this is called the miter table. Get the stop, loosen and the stop out of the way. And this will position both in the plus and minus 45 degree angles. And the thing I like about this is, <clears throat> is it gives full stock support as opposed to angling your fence across this way and just having very limited stock support. Uh, I know there's different makes that, that have similar, similar devices to this. Uh, I, will, I will comment that this particular option is a very expensive option um, on, on these machines. So uh, be prepared for sticker shock if that's what you're looking for. The higher end machines, uh, fully automatic machines, they'll have stops that will automatically position to whatever your computer tells it to, to position to. This isn't that way. This is pretty much a, a hybrid between uh, manual settings and, and display. So I thank you for watching. I hope this has answered some of the questions you may have had about fence systems, whether it be rip fence, outrigger. Uh, in the next episode, I'm going to cover controls and electronics. And there's, there's, there's a lot of convenience and positives for electronic controls, but there's a downside too. And I want to talk about that a little bit in, your, in the next video. So I do thank you for, for watching and have a great day.